Peace, family. Let's get right into it. Our topic today is the death of the black activist athlete. After the late great GOAT, G-O-A-T, greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali's transition, the question is now being asked by me to others, are there any black activist athletes left? Was Muhammad Ali the last of a dying breed? Do we have anybody in the world of sports who's willing to take a stand for justice the way Ali did in the 60s? Now, when Muhammad Ali passed away, it shook the earth to its core. Not only were we saddened to see such a beautiful human being go to his death, some of us were saddened because we knew it to be the complete end of the era of the black athlete who not only would develop his body, but would develop his brain and his mind as such to where he would be intelligent enough to be able to speak out for the masses of the people. Now, we all know the story of Muhammad Ali. He was raised just like any other black athlete in the hood. He was raised to develop his body, but not to worry about his mind. As a matter of fact, when he graduated from high school, he admittedly said that he really couldn't even read. But he went to the Olympics. He became a master boxer in the amateurs. He won a gold medal, came back to Louisville, Kentucky, went to a diner and tried to have a cup of coffee. And the white waiter told him, you know, oh, my God, you're Muhammad Ali. You just won a gold medal. We are so happy to see you, champ. We love you, champ. Congratulations, champ. But guess what, champ? You can't eat here, champ. And he was like, why? I just won a gold medal. My name is Cassius Clay. He said, this is a white's only restaurant. You're not welcome. So as the story is told, I lead through his medal in the river he became disenchanted with the system. He turned professional. He was training down in Miami. He ran into the great Abdul Rahman Muhammad, who was known then as Captain Sam. Captain Sam recruited Ali into the nation, introduced him to Malcolm X. They arranged for Cassius Clay then to meet the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And it was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad who gave him the name Muhammad Ali and made him the people's champion, not only outside of the ring, excuse me, inside of the ring, but outside of the ring. So Ali, who couldn't even read at first, became a mental giant through his studies of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And you got to understand, this is when Cassius Clay became Muhammad Ali. This is when an average athlete with great potential became who we now know as the greatest of all time. It was when that athlete connected with a mentor, a master teacher who taught him something about himself that no coach and no manager would ever teach him. Now, I want you to remember that point because we're going to come back to it. Now, Ali goes on to change his name. And then he gets called for the draft to go to Vietnam. You know the story. Ali stood up. He said, hell no, we won't go. He said that no Viet Cong has ever called him nigga and that his fight was right here in America. They threatened Ali. They told Ali, if you refuse to go to Vietnam, we will strip you of your heavyweight title. We will strip you of your boxing license. We will take everything from you and make it where you can't earn a living. Ali, being the Muslim that he was at that time, he stood on his principles. He stood on his square. He did not go. He ultimately won his case against the government and he goes down in history now as the greatest of all time. But the question that I have to ask now is how many activist athletes have we had since Muhammad Ali? See, what happened is after Ali shook the world with his stand against the U.S. government, the powers that be set a structure in place 
that said that never again in our world of sports will there ever be a black man who spoke as strongly, as boldly, and stood for justice the way Muhammad Ali did. See, they all stood and they applauded for Ali when he died. But that's only because for the past 30 years, while he'd suffered from Parkinson's disease, he could not trouble them anymore. He was no longer a problem. And the rest of the black athletes since then have been under control. Now, after Ali quieted down, resumed his career, a different type of black athlete came into the picture. Again, they determined that there should be no more Ali's. And along comes a man by the name of Orenthal James Simpson. We know him as OJ, the juice. Now, OJ was to be the anti Muhammad Ali, and he played his role very well. If you go back and you study the intricate or uh, intimate life of OJ Simpson, not only did he break the Russian record for yards per season, OJ Simpson probably went into the Guinness Book of World Records as the most cooned out black athlete of all times you talk about a black man who hated his blackness you talk about oj simpson and you know that didn't turn out too well for white america they ended up hating him too now let's go back to this black activist athlete thing see nowadays in sports there's a rule I call it the ball and chain rule. That means if you're going to make millions of dollars playing this with this ball, you have to accept the chains that go along with it. Ball and chain. I remember when Houston Rockets forward Dwight Howard decided that he wanted to just send out a 140 character tweet in support of the Palestinian people. Free Palestine, I think is what he tweeted. Within hours, they made him take it down. Any athlete, especially a black athlete, who tries to speak out about anything political, social, or anything having to do with justice, now, on this side of Muhammad Ali, is outcast, he's attacked, he's berated, They'll put a jacket on him, call him anti-government, anti-white, anti-this, anti-that. If you are going to be in the NFL, NBA, or any other league for that matter, you will stay in your place, especially when it becomes to issues pertaining to black people and injustice. Now, let's look at LeBron James. I read a headline the other day where LeBron James has put up some $40 million to send, I think, 1,100 brothers and sisters to college. I don't know if they're all black, but 1,100 students to college. That's great to pay for brothers and sisters um, tuition. That's a beautiful thing that LeBron is doing. But when Mike Brown gets killed in the middle of the street in Ferguson, Missouri, LeBron can't say nothing. When Eric Garner gets choked to his death on the corner of the street in Long Island, New York, no black athlete has the freedom to stand up and speak up. Ball and chain. So my question to the listeners are, do we have any black activist athletes at all is there one and if there is one that you know of please leave his name in the comment section we want to implore applaud him but i've been asking around since ali made his transition and nobody has been able to give me a square answer my brother marshawn lynch he's doing some things over in haiti building homes and so on and so forth but the likes of muhammad ali People are saying this to me. 
They're saying we'll never see though see another Muhammad Ali again. Now, that's extremely sad if it were to be true. But one thing I know about black people is that if we can't do anything else or if we don't do anything else, we keep on producing greatness, not just on the basketball court and on the football field, but in the world of intelligentsia, we keep producing greatness. So I want to send a message out to all of the athletes. Take a cue from that college football team who during the Black Lives Matter movement made a decision that if you don't fire this college administrator, we will not play ball. And within 24 to 48 hours, that administrator was gone. Why? Because those college ball players who don't even receive a salary, they knew the kind of power that they held. My message to the professional athletes, you are free. You are not emancipated. The only chains that that you are bound to are those that are in your mind. So just like that college football team came together and used their collective power as leverage to get justice for themselves. I want to implore all black athletes to do the same. Unite. Come together. And when it comes time to stand up for a worthy cause and a worthy issue, let your managers, let your owners know. If you don't put pressure where pressure should be put in order to change things, we are not going to play. You do have that power. The question is whether or not you will use it. So will there ever be another black activist athlete again? I hope so. Peace.